this might be a very confusing setup because I'm equally confused as to what AMD is doing with these new CPUs. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tool to Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety at Wookie Triple XL. And today, yes, this is a very confusing setup because there's a gutted machine where there would normally be a built machine. It's actually because I needed those parts for the CK560 review, but I wanted to show you the test bench without those finishing parts. It's literally just the power supply, the SSD, which you couldn't see anyway because it was sitting underneath the heat sink over there. And then the board and everything set up is still exactly the same, just missing basically cooler and power supply. So, Inside of this machine is the bazooka once again. It's back once again, our B450M for our AMD test. But, uh, at least the entry level testing is done on that. I do obviously have my X570 still. 4000 megahertz CL19 did get a RAM upgrade for it as well. RX6600, eight gig in for the GPU. So it's quite nicely specced and it's what I would assume you would look to buy with a sort of level. I mean, the base chip for this is under 2000 Rand with the, with the Ryzen 3 4100, um, just a little quad core there, but it, it's way, I, I, I please, I hope nobody's buying 20,000 Rand GPUs with 2000 Rand CPUs, very obvious bottleneck area. Now, the thing that's confusing me is the specs of the chips and then the performance that they will create from that. So AMD announced one thing and did something completely different, which is literally the first time since this product launch. And I've owned every single platform from 1800X, X370 Pro, sort of level with the Asus Prime, all the way through now to the 5900X. I've had every iteration of the top chip, used every iteration of the top chip, I had a 2700X and I owned these platforms. I owned the 3950 that was on an X470 and then went to X570. And then now I've got the 5900X with the X570. So I've owned every single Ryzen platform since its launch. And I have been a big fan because it's competition and stuff in the market. But now it just seems to me like two of these chips were terribly set up, the two 4000 series chips because they announced one thing and then did something completely different. So the 4100, for instance, was announced with a higher cache system than what it launched with. And exactly the same thing was done on the 4500. And the 4100 especially has been made completely arbitrary with that. If you look at the price points and the specs that I'll have on your screen now with AMD slides, compared to what they actually came out with, you've got a reduction in level three cache, which is just, terrible news for any multi-threaded processing or even single core processing that you help to derive from these chips. The 4500 is far less impacted than the 4100. The 4100 is basically worse than its previous generation 3100 and 3300X. Those had more level three cache than this does. So there's no inherent upgrades. There's no piece of express revision enhancement and this worse caching system. So it's worse. So generation on generation, and these product went backwards. How does that make any sense? Why would you ever do that? I just don't understand, especially with the competitor like 12100F in the market. But without further ado, without further gilding of the not so lily, we're about to show you a bit of a dumpster fire. So if you look at the benchmark results, the 5500 is clear in a way the best. It's got the highest clock speeds and the most amount of cash. And that's obviously going to put it, put it at the top. Now 4500 does keep up considerably in a lot of areas, except where you get into very intense cycles, like Need for Speed Heat is a great example, where it just completely drops off. That's a game that requires a lot of CPU and GPU performance because it's Frostbite engine. And Frostbite tends to mm, numb down on that CPU pretty damn hard simultaneously with the GPU. And you'll see it in some of my other tests. It's always showing where there is performance difference, whether it's on a caching system, like with the 5800X3D, or if it's just the clock speed on the chip that's then different that game always shows it up same thing happens in vermintide way less impact in gpu intensive games you'll even see the 4100 keeping up in games like cyber cyberpunk where it's basically all on the gpu um or the, the majority of the load is in even with the 4100 it didn't go north of 60 percent cpu usage so it's not <clears throat> completely woeful but if you take it as a broad spectrum across the board, Cinebench and, and, and uh, 
but handbrake really tell the story in in absolute spades. There's thirty percent less call count here, but like a forty percent performance difference, and it's all coming down to the caching on that chip. And then simultaneously, in the sixth core twelve thread region, AMD now has five SKUs, and they don't follow the rules of the own of their own convention. So the fifty five hundred, for instance doesn't have PCI Express Gen 4. You wouldn't inherently know that just reading off the chip. You'd have to go into their site and have a look at that or rely on someone like me as a reviewer. So if you're just an amateur person just trying to buy a system, you're going to see 5500 and 5600 and think, oh, these are basically the same. The one's just slightly less performance compared to the other. No, they're physically different. There's no PCI Express Gen 4 in the 5000 series chip. Why? And it's not that the chip itself is a bad chip. It runs really well. I think it's very good bang for buck. At the price point, it makes a lot of sense. But call this the 4500, call this the 4400 or the 4300, make it a, 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 just something else compared to what you did. But now, as an example, in the six, if you're looking at AMD for six core 12 thread, you've got 4500, 5500, 5600G, 5600, and then 5600X in that order of, of performance. How would you know that as just a normal everyday user? You're not going to, unfortunately. The G then has integrated graphics, etc. This is where Intel, I think, is really like showing that they are just really smart with their product catalog. And AMD's really fumbled it here, especially with this 4100. It is the worst. CPU in market, as far as I'm concerned. If you buy it, sorry to say that AMD, but it's the truth. If you buy that over a 12100F, you are making a mistake. There is absolutely no point to buy that chip, honestly. 4500 is weird because the 5500 is a little bit more and just better in every single way. The 4500 just strikes me as a bit of an odd point. These are all 7NM chips, so they are all the new cores. So they try to gimp them with the caching system, but they went a little bit too far. And I honestly think if this just had 12 meg cache instead of like the six that it shipped with, or four, I think it's got four, four megs level three cache. What is this, 2009? Am I buying a, am I buying a, a first gen i7? Like, come on, even those had more cache on them, okay? The 4500 as well started over here with cash and also was dipped down. I can't remember the exact amount. I'll put it on the screen that I will have shown you. And then the 5500, they kind of did same, same, but it's not quite, but it's like they kind of like went in between and then took the premium Pisa Express 4.0 feature off of it. That's not even a premium feature anymore. That's just available on 2000 Rand processors from your competitors. So I don't understand. I don't understand. I think this is a very weird set of products. The 4500 and the 4100 are kind of placeless for me. The 4500 is not an upgrade over your 3600 because of the cash once again. They've got basically the same cause. It's a rebadged gimped 3600, which just doesn't make any sense in the greater perspective of the climates. And maybe they just didn't want to make, you know, stuff compete against themselves. And that's why I'm like, the top end of this makes a lot of sense. Your 5600X, 5600 and 5600G are all very well thought out products. This slot is just I, I just, I just don't know where the thought process was behind it, especially this 4100. We would want good single core performance with lower core counts because people want to, you know, still run like a school computer center with something decent that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. The general gaming market has moved on to six core 12 thread as their sort of default. When you look over the, te the fence at Team Blue, they've got it on lock. Their setup is two different SKUs and then the one has integrated graphics and the other doesn't. It's actually just two different processors. That's all they have. And then it's integrated or not integrated graphics on those. So it gives them four effective SKUs in the market, but it's very easy to follow and understand as a normal end user. So this is the first time in the whole time of testing AMD products since Ryzen launch that I've actually been quite disappointed by them. So 5500, in conclusion then, 5500 I think is still quite a solid option, especially if you're not fussed with PCI Express 4.0, it's still viable. The price makes up for the the difference in the uh, spec and stuff. It it really does. It's it's pretty well priced compared to its general performance. But the other two, 
yeah, unless you're getting them on an absolute deal, I just don't, I, there's just honestly in the current climate, almost no reason to even look at them. Anywho, if you have enjoyed this review, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe and I will see you on the flip side.